1914, Professor Pakali and his student Billy are investigating some ancient ruins in Egypt. By reading the writing on the wall, Pakali translates a prophecy. A great ancient force known as evil comes every 5,000 years to destroy every planet containing life. It can only be stopped by using a weapon that consists of the four natural elements, water, fire, earth, and air, plus the fifth element which is a perfect being. A priest hears how much Pakali has discovered and puts some poison in the water to kill him for knowing too much, but when he offers the water Pakali turns it down and sends Billy to get some alcohol instead. Suddenly a starship lands on top of the pyramid and huge robotic aliens known as the Mondo Shawans come inside. The priest recognizes them because he's been taking care of their relics, which the Mondo Shawans have come to retrieve because war is coming and Earth is no longer safe. A Mondo Shawan takes out a key to open the wall, and Pakali feels so overwhelmed by all these reveals that he passes out. The Mondo Shawans take the four elemental stones and a sarcophagus with the fifth element, which worries the priest because then Earth won't be protected anymore. At that moment Billy finds his gun and opens fire, activating the security system. Walls start closing around them so the aliens rush back to their ship, but one stays behind to give the key to the priest. The hand gets stuck between walls and the priest promises to pass on the knowledge to new priests until the Mondo Shawans return. 300 years later, the prophecy comes true and the great evil begins approaching Earth. President Lindbergh gathers his people to discuss the situation and sends out a military spaceship, which gets its weapons ready to shoot. Suddenly the latest priest Vito shows up to inform Lindbergh that shooting evil will only cause more chaos and tries to share the prophecy about the fifth element, but Lindbergh dismisses him and authorizes the soldiers to open fire. However no matter how many missiles they shoot, evil just absorbs them without getting hurt, then it uses its power to make all the soldiers start bleeding and kill them all. Soon the Mondo Shawans start making their way to Earth too, hoping to stop evil with the super weapon. However they're suddenly attacked by some rogue aliens known as the Mangalores, who blow up their ship and steal the box with the elemental stones. Then the Mangalores contact Zorg, a human working for evil who has hired the Mangalores to get the stones. They agree to meet later to hand in the stones and get paid. Meanwhile in the city, former soldier Corbin says goodbye to his cat and leaves his apartment, only to be blocked by a thief who threatens him with a special weapon. Corbin distracts him by saying he forgot to load it, and when the thief looks down at the button, Corbin takes out his own gun and scares him away. Afterward he leaves in his cab to start his driving shift. Sometime later, a group of soldiers recovers a hand from the wreck of the Mondo Shawan ship and the government scientists put it in a special machine that can reconstruct DNA while explaining that the Mondo Shawans aren't that different from humans. A laser printer-like machine begins putting together the DNA sequence and creates a beautiful woman that the scientists and the soldiers can't stop ogling at, calling her perfect. After the machine gives her some clothes, it tries to take a picture of her, and the noise wakes her up. She immediately panics and as she speaks an unknown language, she tries to open the capsule to no avail. However when a general comes closer and taunts her, the woman gets furious and punches the glass to break it, knocking out the general in the process. As the alarms go off, the woman breaks through the wall to escape. She ends up in the ventilation system and follows it until she makes it to the top of the building, only to suddenly be surrounded by the police. Seeing no other choice, she decides to jump off and ends up landing inside Corbin's cab. He immediately becomes attracted to her beauty and tries to communicate, but he can't understand her. At that moment the police surround his car so the woman reads a sign that says please help. At first Corbin refuses because he doesn't want to lose his job, but then the woman cries and Corbin finally takes pity on her. Corbin speeds up and a chase ensues as their cars fly all over the city, which Corbin knows very well. By pulling some sharp turns, he manages to make a car crash against a delivery truck, and when the other two police cars open fire, Corbin drives into a very foggy area to disappear from their radar. Unfortunately the woman isn't well and says the word priest before passing out. Corbin looks for a priest in the area and ends up in Vito's apartment, who sees the mark on the woman's arm and immediately recognizes her as the fifth element. Vito and his assistant David go looking for the ceremonial robes while Corbin tries to wake the woman up with a gentle kiss, only for her to take his weapon and make him step back at gunpoint. Corbin apologizes and introduces himself with his card, learning in return that her name is incredibly long so they'll be shorting it to Lilu. Then Vito and David come back to give Lilu the tomb key while kicking Corbin out. For the next few hours, Lilu eats a lot and uses Vito's computer to catch up on 5,000 years of history, learn the local language, and even pick up a few martial arts moves. Vito can understand Lilu's language and learns she knows where the elemental stones are. In the meantime, the Mangalores meet with Zorg, who sees a human leading them and calls him out. The human begins transforming and reveals to be the Magalore leader Aknot, who had been using a human disguise to hide among the president's soldiers. He hands over the box to Zorg and asks for payment, so Zorg offers them the latest technology and weapons. Using some dummies, Zorg shows all the things these weapons are capable of, claiming they can destroy anything. The Mangalores happily take the weapons and Zorg finally opens the box, only to find it empty. Furious, Zorg tries to cancel their deal, but Aknot points out they grabbed the box Zorg asked for and the content was never their problem. Zorg pretends to let the matter go and leaves the building knowing what happens next, 
the Mangalores press an extra button on the weapon without knowing that activates an explosive, which immediately goes off and brings them down. Back to Vito, he learns from Lilu that the Mondo Shawans gave the stones to someone they could trust and Lilu is supposed to contact that person. Using a map on the computer, Lilu shows them that the person is a famous singer who will be performing on a luxury resort liner at Floston Paradise. Suddenly there's a knock on the door and Vito opens it to find Zorg's henchmen, who drag him out to see their boss. Zorg demands to know where the stones are and when Vito refuses to tell, Zorg says his mission is also to protect life. He just happens to think that life is an inevitable result of destruction, chaos is what makes humanity progress. While Zorg shows Vito all his gadgets, he accidentally chokes on a piece of cherry, but no matter what button he presses all his gadgets are useless in this situation. Vito uses the chance to point out power is useless if Zorg can still be killed by something so small and hits his back to help him expel the cherry. Zorg acknowledges this act of kindness and lets Vito go. Afterward one of Zorg's henchmen uses a bug to spy on a presidential meeting and learns that the singer has the stones. Lindbergh orders his men to hire the best agent for the mission, who happens to be Corbin. Before Zorg can learn more, Lindbergh sees the bug and kills it. Meanwhile Corbin is having dinner from a flying street vendor when suddenly he gets a message telling him he's been fired. Then he gets a call from his mother, asking him why he didn't tell her he won the Gemini contest. Corbin doesn't understand because he didn't enter any contest, only for a second message to arrive with the contest prize, two tickets for Flost in Paradise. His confusion ends when three soldiers come to see him and explain the government rigged the contest so Corbin could travel undercover and retrieve the stones from the singer. Feeling manipulated, Corbin tries turning the offer down, but at that moment he's interrupted by more visitors, it's Vito and Lilu. Panicking, Corbin hides the soldiers in his refrigerator before letting the others in. Vito quickly pulls a gun on Corbin and says they need the tickets to retrieve the stones. Suddenly, the apartment alarm goes off signaling a police control. Corbin hides Lilu in his sink and Vito in the self-making bed, then he stands against the wall for the police to do their routine. He pretends he isn't Corbin and the police check another apartment, where a neighbor insults them and accidentally makes them believe he's Corbin. The police immediately arrest him and take him out in a bag, but on their way out, the Mangalores block their way and kill a bunch of cops to steal the body bag. It turns out Aknot survives Zorg's bomb and wants revenge, so he'll steal the stones first. Once the coast is clear, Corbin lets Lilu and Vito out of hiding, but as soon as he turns around, Vito knocks him out and steals the tickets. When Corbin wakes up, Vito and Lilu are gone, so he opens the fridge and takes the mission letter from the frozen soldiers, saying he agrees to cooperate. Moments later at the airport, David is using fake passports to pass off as Corbin and Lilu as his wife. However when they're about to check in, Corbin arrives and pretends David was his assistant so the clerk won't get suspicious. Corbin and Lilu are allowed into the spacecraft while David runs back to Vito, who gives him the key and tells him to get the temple ready while he chases after Lilu. Soon two Mangalores arrive in human disguises and try to pretend to be Corbin and Lilu, but the clerk can see the truth on the computer and sends them away. Afterward Zorg's henchman also comes and tries to pretend he's Corbin, however the clerk can see the real one has already boarded and activates security measures. The guy immediately runs away and uses a payphone to call Zorg, who is disappointed by this failure and detonates the payphone to kill the man. The explosion happens at the same time the ship takes off, allowing Vito to sneak around unnoticed. Inside the ship, Lilu goes to their pod but Corbin is dragged away by a flight attendant who takes him to see Ruby, a famous host. Ruby wants the contest winner to be part of his show and shows Corbin around while saying hello to his fans, however Corbin answers his questions with just one or two words. An irritated Ruby scolds him for not cooperating. So Corbin pushes him against the wall and threatens him into leaving him alone. Afterward Corbin joins Lilu in their pod and discovers she can finally speak a little English, but they don't get to chat much because the flight attendants put them to sleep for the duration of the trip. Meanwhile Zorg gets a call from Evil, who reminds him to get the stones soon or there will be consequences. With just its voice, Evil manages to make Zorg's head bleed as a warning. A few hours later, the spaceship finally makes it to planet Floston. While the passengers disembark, the technicians find Vito hiding in the ventilation system. Corbin checks their hotel room while Lilu stays hidden in the hallway to watch the singer called Diva arrive at the hotel too. Diva can sense Lilu hiding nearby and sends her assistant to tell her they can meet after the concert. Afterward Ruby drags Corbin to Diva's concert, who sings so beautifully it makes many people cry. While Zorg also arrives at the hotel, the Mangalores break into Diva's room to look for the stones. Lilu is still hiding nearby and sees them, so she rushes into Diva's room too and starts fighting the Mangalores using the martial art moves she learned from Vito's computer. One by one all the aliens are knocked down by Lilu, who proves her body truly is perfect, thanks to being the fifth element. Then she retrieves the box the aliens were about to steal, but when she tries to leave she finds Zorg blocking the way. Terrified of his high-tech gun, Lilu throws the box at him then jumps to hide in the vents. Zorg opens fire at the vent and can hear Lilu getting hurt. Assuming she's dying soon, Zorg leaves after setting up a bomb that will blow up in 20 minutes. 
Unfortunately, there are more Mangalores around the hotel who soon start taking hostages and interrupt the concert when they shoot Diva. As the public runs away in panic, Diva falls off the stage and Corbin rushes to help her, dragging her to hide behind the seats. With her last breath, Diva asks Corbin to save humanity and tells him that the stones are hidden inside her. Somewhere else Zorg opens the box and sees it's empty, so he'll have to return to the hotel. Suddenly a Mangalore tries to attack Corbin, but he quickly knocks it down and tells Ruby to keep the alien at gunpoint. Then Corbin reaches inside dive through the bullet wound and starts taking out the stones, which he wraps up in his jacket and gives to Ruby, asking him to protect them with his life. Soon more Mangalores enter the theater, but Corbin uses the gun to fight back while Ruby escapes to one of the balconies. After Corbin manages to kill a bunch of Mangalores, they open fire with more powerful missiles, forcing him to hide behind a bar. Hearing more threats thrown his way, Corbin has no choice but to come out with his hands up, but at that moment he notices Ruby on the balcony and gestures for him to move. Then Corbin jumps on a plank and sends an alien flying, getting its head stuck through the balcony. Ruby screams at the sight and the Mangalore panics as it opens fire, hurting its own people. Corbin finally has an opening to grab another gun and kill the remaining enemies. Sadly more Mangalores come in, so Corbin shoots a bunch of bullets that cut Ruby's exact silhouette and make him fall, then he throws a grenade through the resulting hole. Ruby and Corbin hide under the table while the explosion kills all the incoming aliens. With the coast clear, Corbin and Ruby rush to the control room and find more Mangalores holding a bunch of people hostage, including Vito. Another fight ensues and the humans are clearly winning, so Aknot asks for a human to come to negotiate with him. Corbin volunteers only to shoot Aknot in the head as soon as he sees him. Afterward Corbin checks the security footage and sees Lilu's hand hanging from the vents, so he rushes to save her. Vito and Ruby follow him and discover the bomb, so soon the alarms go off and the guests are evacuated. Corbin's team goes to the docks at the same time Zorg makes it back, but they miss each other by just seconds. While the team steals Zorg's ship to escape, Zorg returns to the room and deactivates the bomb, only to discover that the Mangalore is left behind another explosive. With its dying breath, Aknot's right hand detonates the bomb and blows up the hotel, killing Zorg. Thankfully the team escapes before the explosion can reach them but this is sensed by Evil, who starts traveling toward Earth faster. Lindbergh's scientists detect this so he calls Corbin to inform him they have only two hours to save the world. During the trip, Lilu wakes up and continues to study human history, only to learn about all the wars and how violent humans can act. Eventually the group makes it to Egypt, where David takes them to the temple. Lilu is still hurt and passes out again from her wounds before she can explain what to do. The guys realize the symbols on the stones match the pillars, so they put each stone in the right spot yet nothing happens. Then David accidentally sighs on the air stone and activates it, meaning each stone needs its element. They put sweat on the water stone, throw dirt on the earth one, and finally light up a match on the fire one. With all the stones glowing and ready to go, Corbin rushes to Lilu and wakes her up only to hear her say she doesn't want to save humanity because of how destructive they are. Corbin tells her some things like love are worth saving, and when Lilu says she never knew love, Corbin kisses her. At that moment the fifth element finally awakens and together with the stones, it activates the ultimate weapon, which hits evil as it's about to arrive and finally destroys it for good. Sometime later the government scientists put Corbin and Lilu in the DNA pod to cure their wounds. Lindbergh comes by to thank them for their efforts but a scientist asks him to wait. It turns out the duo is finally awake and getting naughty inside the pod.